Hi, I'm Paul Schmutzler, and I'm here today with Jake. Jake. Hi, I'm Jake. Jake is with DF Productions. DF Productions here in town. Yep, uh, we're here in Knoxville, and we're reviewing a couple of Manfrotto products today. The 546B, we've got two of those. One is actually Jake's personal model, and then we've got one on loan from Manfrotto. In addition to that, Manfrotto loaned us this 504 big head here, a fluid head, but also this very small 500 model. And then in between, Jake has a 502, or sorry, a... Uh, That's a 502, I this, think. This is yeah. a 502, yes. And I actually have an older style 502 head as well, but you can't see that because it's being used on one of the cameras here today. Yeah. But we've got three different options here. What we wanted to talk about is, what do you look for in a tripod? Why do you have a tripod? Okay, it's kind of the most basic support for cameras that you use. You can support a camera with just about anything, right? You can hand hold it, you can put it on your shoulder, yeah. you can put it on your t-shirt, you can put it pretty much anywhere. On but, a pillow. But on the <laughs> other hand, everyone uses a tripod for something. So what do you look for in a tripod? Well, it depends on your rig. So Jake, why don't you tell us about the different ones we've got here and just kind of why we chose to put each one on the individual setups that we have. I mean, most of the difference really comes down to the heads right now. I'm comfortable, I would be comfortable putting any of these cameras on any of the legs, um, even some of the lighter legs back there, as long as, depending on the shot. Like if you have um, like a really light, uh, just basically three pole system, uh, it might not handle some like faster pans mm -hmm. or a higher drag system, but it's perfectly fine for a static shot. Yeah, um, I mean anything's fine for a static shot. Yeah. That could be mounted to a tree for all we yeah. care, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean I've, I've put some crazy rigs together. Anything from just attaching one of these heads to a C stand to like bungee cables in a tree, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, but any of these tripods would work for any of these cameras, but the real distinction is the head right now. Mm -hmm. um, and they're really mostly just done by weight, pretty much. Um, honestly, um, obviously this head is suitable for any of these cameras except for the price point that you don't really need this head to fit either of these cameras. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, I think they're scaled pretty much perfectly right now. So we've, we've kind of played around with these and it's got two lock knobs on the, for the pan and the tilt that are separate. And the one thing you notice right away is it's a fixed tension, so you can't adjust it. It's, it's on or off. Um, the one thing that you liked about this was it's similar to your other tripod, a Cartoni, yeah. in that it's able to just snap in here. I really like that plate system. Uh, it, it, it makes for really quick snap and go, it's reliable, it's fast, yeah. uh, which a lot of times in the field, especially if you're dealing with a camera. Now, to be fair, this isn't a large tripod head, so it's not that big of a deal. But for instance, if you're dealing with a 40 pound camera, I love that snap system. So I, you know, I'd love to see it adopted in uh, some of the later, some of the larger models. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's really cool that it's here. So show us on the 504 how that one has to go in, because it can't snap in, it has to actually slide in. Yeah, yeah. So all you do is you loosen up the tightener on the side, and it's got a press button here, it keeps it from being pulled out or in. So you press the press button and slide it off back. So that's nice, because if you do have something you're trying to get a whole lot of, a wide variety of shots in a short time frame, like with us with the dog, the dog's gonna get tired out eventually, and maybe the, 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 ball, the ball thrower's gonna get tired out too. So we could easily just snap on, you know, snap the other one on and, and just swap them really quickly and easily. Yeah. So that was an advantage. So in between, just tell us a little bit about your personal one here, this 502. Okay, so yeah, I got the 502 originally for this, G, this GH2 rig, or GH4 rig. And I really love with the YAG on here and a, a, a bar system and a mat box. I think this is the perfect size rig for this. Sort of, uh, you know, moderately, maybe slightly heavier DSLR rig to middle size prosumer camera grade rig. Um, it's really nice. It's the perfect tension. It's the perfect counterweight. Um, this camera doesn't have a variable counterweight. It's got whatever's basically built onto it. Mm -hmm. um, but for this camera, it's really where it needs to be. I mean, it holds it right there perfectly. Yeah. Well, it's your personal one, so you've got it dialed yeah, it's, into it's, what you Well, want. it's dialed into this camera. Now, I've since picked up the 700, and it is not meant for the 700. The mm -hmm. 700 is vastly too, it's way too heavy for this tripod, or at least this head. Um, I do use it. In fact, I've put 45 pound rigs on this, big FS7 rigs with bar systems and uh, an Odyssey and uh, I mean, basically all the bells and whistles mm -hmm. and ridiculously heavy systems. And it has performed under those kinds of strains. It's not rated for them, but it does perform under them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I do notice like, essentially the tensioner doesn't compensate 
for the camera at that at that point. You have to do a lot more work with the tripod as opposed to letting the tripod do the work. Yeah. Which is the problem as you put heavier cameras on smaller tripod heads is you can no longer rely on the tripod for its ability to compensate for motion. Mm -hmm. The nice part about a tensioner is you can just put you can put motion on it and once that you set the tensioner right, you can get a nice smooth drag without having to worry about basically sort of like shaky jutteriness yeah. like of a tr of a, like a cheaper head mm -hmm. because the the head is doing the work yeah another um, difference between these larger heads and this smaller one is the fact that for example this handle is not adjustable yeah it's adjustable in that you can go left or right you can adjust the angle but it doesn't slide in or out and it also can get in the way if you try to get a low angle like this you're going to have to adjust it and that's something you don't want to do, especially when you're shooting some sort of action where you're wanting to do something quickly. Yeah, this um, one's kind of in the middle. Right. It, it does have a little bit of ability. If you loosen up, you can kind of force it through the other side, although mm -hmm. it likes to stay in that same spot. But you do have a little bit more ability to shift it around. Mm -hmm. um, really what it comes down to is being able to get really nice smooth pans though. Yeah. And to extend the arm out as far as you can on the 504. Yeah, and that's a great thing about this one because that handle gets super long. It gets super long. It's a good you, leverage. Yeah, if you especially if you're doing like sports shooting mm -hmm. and you need to manage your pan over long focal lengths, right. this is really very nice. Yeah. And plus it helps you smooth it out. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things you talked about before to me was the, uh, the latches on the legs. Yeah. They're, they're really difficult, which in a way is good because mm -hmm. you want it to be tight. But on the other hand, you said that yours, as it's aging, it's starting to show its age and it's starting to slide a little bit. Yeah, um, I mean, I you've had I'd, this for about a year. I've had said? it for about a year now. Okay. I, I think I've the I think with these legs, there's kind of a wear in period. I don't think mm -hmm. I think out of the box, you have to work them, break them in a little bit. Yeah. Um, and some equipment's like that, and some isn't. These legs, I think, are definitely like that. Mm -hmm. um, the latch system, I don't mind it being tough. In fact, I, you know, it sort of comforts me to know that the camera can't go anywhere. But I have noticed that the more I use these legs and the more I open them and close, open and close the latches, that the, the 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 bolts on the inside of these latches start to loosen up, and mm -hmm. the camera will literally sag on one leg. Mm -hmm. And so I can no longer, a lot of times, rely on the level that I set because, especially under larger strains, um, like the 700, which these legs are rated for. You know, a large camera. Mm -hmm. um, they should handle the 700, and you just have to constantly watch those screws. And sort of the annoying part about them is they're, it's not a Phillips head or a flat head, something easily adjustable, or even an Allen. I carry an Allen set with me all the time. It's a Torx bit. Okay, spreader. so we, we talked about the spreader a little bit as well. It's, a, it's not very intuitive with yeah. trying to rotate these. Um, so we, we played around with them earlier. We showed how you can get super low with this set of legs. It's really nice. You almost can replace your hi-hat with it, but it, it's a little bit of a chore to get it there. Yeah. Um, the one thing about those is those little butterfly kind of knobs there, it's not intuitive which way you turn them. It's not really obvious. Um, Jake found that it seemed like if you turn it towards the word lock, that locks. Yeah. But it also doesn't have an arrow indicating like, hey, this way is locked. So yeah. it was kind of something we just had to figure out. And it's not something you can see really easily as well. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a small inscribed word, and at the same time, you should just be able to reach down and sort of intuitively know which way it goes. Right. And it's not always obvious, so I, I regularly spend a little bit of time figuring out which way they spin on set. Yeah. yeah. And once you get the hang of it, sure, it's good, but on the other hand, you've been using this for a year. I've been using it for a year, and I still can't get it right. You want it to be yeah. more intuitive than yeah. having to train, retrain yourself on it. So. Yeah. Um, and of course, these also have flat rubber feet that you can use. Of course, they can easily flip right off and you have spike feet for outdoor use. So you can go really low with this like a hi-hat, um, but you do have the potential of running into this long handle here to adjust the bowl um, because it's it's pretty long, whereas a lot of heads have just a, a knob or something smaller so you could get closer to the ground. But on the opposite side of that, this thing gets really tall, which is great, especially if you're somewhere trying to shoot over heads, maybe on a a news conference or something and sorry star of the show is interrupting here um, you can get this really tall to shoot overheads without the need to have a set of apple boxes or something that you've got to set it up on yeah so you can see the hammer the camera is now basically over our heads height and of course you just tilt your monitor down and get yeah. that nice height out of it I mean any sort of monitoring system has to be able to compensate for a tall camera but mm -hmm. you swing that around Yeah, so this one doesn't have a center column like my my older model here 
does have the ability to raise up even taller. So this one can crank up, but of course, with that center column coming up, you're gonna risk having a little more movement to it. Yeah, this Whereas, is pretty sturdy, even yeah, this far This around. one comes up all three legs. You still have the stability of the three, three point plane yeah. to keep it from moving around. And the nice part I found also working with this tripod is if you're working on uneven ground, which can be a real challenge a lot of times with tripods, you're having to drop one leg far to the ground. Mm -hmm. You can compensate a lot by just using one arm of the spreader mm -hmm. and working with that. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's saved me a couple times. And it, it makes the camera, um, it makes the tripod a much more stable system on uneven ground. Mm -hmm. So that's a couple of Manfrotto's offerings. We have the 504 HD, mm -hmm. which is for really big heavy rigs. It's got a 75 millimeter bowl. Yeah. And then we have the 502, which is a bowl head as well. And then the 500, which is only a flat base. And there are several other options out there. The question is, does your head support the weight that you need? And can it move smoothly with the action you have to follow?